Brooks here coming to you live from Bangor, Maine. I am a physician assistant. I've been practicing emergency medicine for 14 years and about two and a half years ago opened Inner Greatness Center where I'm really bridging the gap between modern and alternative medicine. So today's video, it's a lot of numbers, um, but I wanted to provide you guys uh, with the hard cold facts um, about prescription drugs. You might not be aware of these. Hey, good morning, Teresa. How are you? Hey, um, Elizabeth. Um, and so what we're gonna talk about today is, um, I think that people, patients specifically, are overestimating the ability for like cancer screening and prescription drugs to um, prevent disease, to, to treat disease. And I think that probably 90% of people taking prescription drugs would think twice about this if they knew these facts. So first things first. Now, properly prescribed prescriptions, guess what? 106,000 people are dying, 106,000 Americans are dying annually from properly prescribed drugs, okay? That's, that's staggering, right? Now, 7,000 deaths are occurring from people receiving the wrong medication by mistake. 20,000 people are dying from hospital errors. 80,000 dying from hospital acquired infections. And actually the most, the most up-to-date information, it's guesstimating that it's about 99,000. Now, are physicians, uh, I mean, are we to blame for that? Well, you know what's kind of uh, crazy is that Hand washing is the single best way to prevent the passing of infection. Okay, less than typically when we look at hospitals and we screen for efficacy or efficiency in hand washing, uh, less than 50% of healthcare um, workers um, are washing their hands or using hand sanitizer appropriately. Now they actually did a study um, looking specifically at uh, patients in the intensive care unit when they have uh, precautions like contact precautions posted on the outside of their door, still less than a quarter of physicians, so physicians, you know, they're the worst culprits, are uh, properly washing their hands or using hand sanitizer. So you know what, maybe, even though we've known about this since like the 1840s, hand washing, um, maybe we do, uh, maybe we are contributing to these hospital acquired infections. Okay, another thing, 12,000 people guys, they're dying from surgeries that are completely unnecessary. So if we add up those numbers, that's about 225,000 Americans dying annually from iatrogenic causes. In other words, from medicine, you know, from physicians. Now that's just inpatients, okay? So if we look at the outpatient setting, people that have adverse effects from drugs that come into the hospital, we're still looking at about 199,000 deaths. Hey Sherry, good morning, good morning, hey Cindy. Hey Tom, um, so why are we talking about this? We're talking about this because typically when you go in to see your physician, what do they do? They talk to you for maybe 15 minutes, they write you your prescriptions and then you leave. How many of you, please comment below because I, I'm dying to know this, um, <laughs> speaking of deaths, but I wanna know, when you go to see your doctor, do they talk about lifestyle modifications and diet? Probably not. I was actually working with a colleague the other day and she was eating kind of a horrid lunch uh, she raves about eating, you know, uh, all these um, candies and cookies and whatever, and she's saying that we have to die of something. Just not true. Just not true. Hey, good morning, Lorna. So we don't hear about these risks associated with prescribed drugs, do we? Now, it's alarming to me because if we just changed lifestyle, if we made lifestyle modifications uh, and made some diet changes, guess what? We wouldn't be getting these drugs prescribed in the first place and we wouldn't end up in the hospital. What's our number one killer? Our number one killer is still coronary artery disease. Okay, completely preventable, even reversible. But if I asked you, if you were open to changing your diet and making lifestyle modifications, what would you say? Because I think a lot of people, they want to opt for that pill option because frankly, it's just easier. But is it that effective? No. Now I'm not saying, please, don't, don't change my words. I am not saying that there is no um, time when uh, prescriptions are needed. I am absolutely so thankful for modern medicine. We are great at acute stuff. 
Like if you break a bone, if you lacerate yourself, if you cut off a finger, uh, if you have an acute infection, like we're your people, like modern medicine, it's the place to go. But why do we still suck so badly at treating chronic diseases? Um, and I think the big thing, the big piece that's missing is education. So I'm thankful for you guys. And I think that if we kind of band together and we provide others with education about adhering to a plant-based diet, right? Like who's ever heard of dying from eating fruits and vegetables and grains, right? Like if we can decrease consumption of animal products, if you're suffering from IBS, Crohn's, um, colitis, get rid of dairy guys. If you have chronic pain, if you've had stenting or bypass grafts, if you have high cholesterol, this is diet dependent for the most part, okay? So do what's hard now, which might be to change your diet, because it kind of frankly is super difficult to change things once we've been eating a certain way for you know who knows how long. But if you do it, I promise you, you will see a dramatic change. You know what, I've worked with so many patients that have felt so crappy that their diet, as soon as it changes, like they're feeling better a few days later. If that's you, if you've gone plant-based, if you've omitted dairy, comment below, let people know that you have made these changes and that you're feeling much, much better. So modern medicine, like I said, um, it's great, I'm so thankful for it, but let's integrate the two. Now, in the 90s, the Journal of American Medical Association, the JAMA, they actually looked at the iatrogenic causes of death, which we just talked about, and they compared it to uh, three jumbo jet crashes occurring every two days. Now, if those jet crashes occur every two days, I sure hope that the federal aviation, whoever the people are that manage the planes, would look into the causes, right? Like, why aren't we, as a society, asking more questions to the pharmaceutical? I don't know, I don't get it. Um, so anyway, oh, I'm so glad to hear that, Tiffany. Um, so anyway, I'm hoping that you guys have found some value in this. Share this, these numbers, they're staggering. Um, and we need to all become more aware that remember prescriptions treat symptoms. Let's look at underlying cause. Let's give our bodies what they need to function optimally. And again, please know, I'm not trashing modern medicine. I just wanna make you guys more aware of the risks associated with prescriptions because like I said, I think 90% of us probably wouldn't even opt to take these medications, but they're the things that are handed to us first from our doctor uh, because that's how your doctor's trained. So anyway, hope you guys have found some value. If you guys know someone taking a ton of prescriptions, uh, share this with them. Just be an advocate for your own health because your doctor is probably not going to take the time to educate you on lifestyle and diet modification. That has to come from you. So hoping I can provide some value. So thankful for all of you guys. Um, take care and uh, we'll talk soon. See ya.